So this lifestyle, the whole homesteading, having roosters, <laughs> this can be intimidating for people out there, especially if you've never raised your own animals before. But I'm here to tell you, um, don't let this, this lifestyle intimidate you. If I can do it, you guys can too. Stick around, we're gonna talk about the pigs today and a few other things about being more self-reliant. So this feedback actually got wet from the rain the other day. So I'm just pouring it all over the ground, let them pick through what they want and they'll discard whatever they don't want. Um, I just want to get rid of it before it got too moldy and make something sick, but they're good to go. Okay, I got set up underneath my favorite tree behind me with my smoker that I haven't used in a long time. I need to, get, I need to use that again. Um, but today's just going to be kind of a, I'm going to answer some questions, uh, some questions I've been getting about the pigs, um, give you a little update on what we got going on and just what, um, just what life is in general with, with us. Uh, so right now I've been, I've been working on the plumbing all morning, got quite a bit of it knocked, quite a bit of it knocked out. Um, they're going to be coming next week to do the the slab, so I have to get that finished up this by this weekend. Have it all set, ready to go. Um, I don't see any problems with that. Um, and in the next video or two, we'll show you update on the plumbing and all that. I don't know how interested you guys are all into plumbing, <laughs> especially when someone like me is just learning how to do things like that. Um, I'm I'm ready for um, to start doing the framing and stuff. That's what I'm excited about. Um, but anyway, so that that's update on that. I've been getting a lot of questions on the pigs. It's uh, almost the middle of September now. First half of September is almost over anyway. You might say I think today's seventh or eighth. So we're in the first we're in the first week. Weeks the first week is over September. And you a lot of you all ask me when I'm going to take the pigs to the processor or if we're gonna process the pigs ourselves, the hogs ourselves. Um, I have processed a couple in the past um, but um, we don't have the equipment or the setup to do that here on the homestead now. In the future, that's something I definitely want to do is learn the exact cuts and stuff like that um, before we kind of just quartered it out and cut the, the tenderloins off and stuff like that. But I want to learn how to do, do it all. And uh, so that will be in the future. Um, we want to build a smokehouse out here eventually. We'll do another cool room. So we'll be able to, this will be a functioning homestead, um, just not with a few pigs and chickens, but we intend um, to raise multiple things on top of that and uh, be able to uh, provide for um, our family and other families 
um, food off our own property um, so that's where we're at that that's what we want to do here on on the property but it's going to be after we get the house built the house build is number one important thing obviously uh, we need a place to live other other than the camper camper is temporary we want to get into the house as soon as possible um, so with the slab being poured next week then the framing starts and, and it's going to be the exciting times um, once we get it dried in i'm excited for that winter is um well fall is not too far away it's really really soon um, the colder weather will be setting in probably closer to november here in oklahoma um, there's been plenty of day plenty of hunting seasons where i was sitting in a tree stand on no on october uh, 25th and it's like 89 degrees 90 degrees so we don't get the cold extreme temperatures um all that often early early in fall uh, it's usually November, mid-November when it really starts getting cold here. So we got some time to get busy, but um, it'll, it'll sneak up on us quick. Uh, so, so with the pigs, uh, people ask if we're going to process ourselves. No, we're not. Not now. Eventually, yes. Um, so we're going to take them to the processor November 2nd. I actually got a phone call from them today to verify that we're bringing the four pigs still. Because last year, um, we actually lost a couple. We lost one pig. So we were only able to take three instead of four last year. So they kind of like just to check to make sure everything's on. Um, still still the go you might say because we scheduled this back in uh, March whenever we no, we actually scheduled this back in January before the pigs were even born that's how backed up butchers are um, they're almost they're they're a long ways out months even uh, eight nine months even a year out on uh, in certain places that's a big spider what is that there's a spider down there about to crawl on me um, but yeah so that's where we're at that November 2nd is our drop-off date and um, so a real quick run now I want to I want this video to encourage someone out there I know one of you all that's watching this or multiple people that are watching this are on the fence about raising their own animals or even starting a homestead in, in general and um, I want to go I want to tell you guys if you're if you haven't been around my channel very long say say you, you just coming about it not over the last several months and we don't haven't talked about the pigs a whole lot uh, when we lived out on the homestead on on the farm um, the pigs were a lot to do with our channel quite a bit we were building the, the pig pens raising them I was showing you the feed and all that um, so for this is more towards the new audience maybe some old audience is still on the fence um, if you are on the fence about getting pigs or chickens or anything like that I, I know the number one holdup uh, most people say they don't have the room or the or the land to raise animals um, and that's simply a lot of cases just not true if you really know what it takes to raise um, animals I know some of you all may live in town you can't have pigs uh, pigs stink uh, quite a, they, they can stink pretty bad now I do I do know of some people who have raised pigs in town but they do like just one and keep and keep keep the smell contained and they clean it out quite a bit so it can be done privacy fences and stuff like that and maybe your neighbors don't care um, so that is a possibility but with pigs and even chickens backyard chickens is like the gateway um, to get into being more self-reliant and I pushed that on this channel a bunch you need to be as most self-reliant as possible um, especially on the, this time in uh, this age of time um, where things are going bad quick seems like quicker um, than, in, in the, than in the past with everything that went on last year things are going on this year um, this just doesn't look like things are gonna go up it just uh, things aren't getting more positive I you might say and in uh, times are where you need to be able to provide for your family and raising pigs is like a really easy way to be able to provide meat for your family food for your family with a small space um, so if you guys aren't familiar um, I've raised pigs in several different pens this one back behind me I've got a series of videos out on it how, to, how we did that that's an actually a very big pig uh, pig pen for what I'm used to um, I've done 16 by 16 pen, uh, pens with um, hog or not with uh with cattle cattle um panels and t post and worked awesome i mean the pigs did were really healthy um they had a good life but it was a small space and i've done them i've done them in um 32 by 32 32 by 16 space um four pigs in in those you can does not take a lot of space to raise these pigs and, and i think once you guys realize that you may not be so hesitant to raise to raise them yourself um, this one back here I think it's like 70 by I think seven I can't can't really remember I think it's 70 by 100 it's a lot bigger um, but it's gonna and that's gonna serve another purpose other than the fact of just raising pigs in there we'll be able to raise a steer in there if we want um, I could I could put a fence down the middle I could put the mere one fence a netting um, electric netting down the middle to uh, make different paddocks 
um, to raise different animals in. So I wanted to make it a little bit bigger to have options. Being the first and only pen out here on this new homestead that we're building from scratch, um, I didn't just want to do a simple small one because I wanted to have option. If we want to get a steer and things like that, we can. Um, we went with the smaller fencing. Um, you guys will, you guys have probably seen that. It's, I think it's a two by four maybe. Two by two, it's small, so horse fencing, and I highly recommend it if it's in your budget. Uh, now you don't have to do that that uh, expensive fencing, but I know if I want to put some goats in there or anything like that, um, goats are prone to getting their I've got a bug on my face. Uh, goats are prone to getting stuck in field fence, and that's what we had on our old property. I do not recommend field fence whatsoever. Um, that was all that was in our budget. Um, whenever we were doing it at the time and we had sheep so we didn't have the problem with them getting their heads stuck well then when we transferred over into the goats it was it was a, almost an everyday battle um, so make sure you have the proper uh, fencing if you want to get in that but anyways for pigs all you need is shade you need some fresh water and a mud hole pigs do not sweat um, a lot of people don't realize that pigs don't sweat um, so they need to have that mud waller so they can get the mud all over and one day i walked out and brandy's rinsing all the mud off of them i said what are you doing They're like oh i'm just rinsing them off they like it well yeah they might like it but they spent a while trying to get that mud all over and protect them from the sun because they don't sweat i don't know if she realized that realized that or not but uh it, it wasn't a big deal they just jumped back in there but that's that's one thing pigs have to have the mud if they don't have a lot of shade um, you might be able to get away with not having a mud hole if you have multiple trees with shade covered the whole the whole day um, you could probably get away with it but i recommend always having a, a mud waller um, so yeah the premier so another another way we raise pigs in a small confined space was with the premier one netting um, if you guys haven't seen that just go back and watch some of my videos we actually put the premier one netting out here before we moved out here with the pigs um, because i raised them a couple years uh, full time out in the middle of a pasture with some artificial shade mud waller um, a 55 gallon drum of water and an automatic feeder and they i had four i think i had four of them in there and they thrived never got out one time um, the only time they ever got close to getting out is when we had a storm and i can't remember what it was but something a feeder or something blew over on top of the fence and laid it down and i just happened to catch it it was still live so they didn't go over it other than that they have not got out one time not don't even attempt it they'll go up to there and they'll get shocked and and they'll kind of bounce off and, and they'll uh, stay away from it but that premier one netting for especially like a backyard a small backyard if you guys are able to you know, maybe you got a quarter acre or whatever and you want to raise pigs and you're not real concerned about the smell and all that the premier net netting premier one netting is a really good option um, because once the pigs are gone you can just roll it back up put it in the shed and use it for the next go around and they also sell netting for like sheep and chickens too so <clears throat> there's multiple options there and yeah, we've been using it for probably three to four years now and we really really like it um, I didn't hesitate at all to put them out here um, with that so with all that being said you do not have to have a big space um, with chickens either chickens backyard chickens are like one of the least amount of space you can let them free range in your backyard have a little place for them to coop up at night and roost and do all that e easy easy so you guys you can start this homesteading journey and I like to call it more this more self-reliant uh, journey quicker than you pro probably think and that's one of the number one things that talking to people and just my experience overall is people are are scared to do it because first of all it's kind of intimidating if you've never raised animals before especially a large animal like pigs they get big big they get big 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 um, as you feed them uh, so it's all uh, they get strong too so i can see the intimidation factor on it but don't be intimidated um, take that step jump out there and just start raising your own animals. I mean, you guys can do this. Um, there's there's probably a processor near you. If you wanna start um, raising pigs this spring, go ahead and call them and get your butcher date set for next fall, I'm telling you. Um, so we'll get our, uh, we got these pigs in March. We usually get in between March, April, May, in between that three month period. I like around April is a pretty good time frame because um, when you get them around April, May, April, March, March being the very, very, depending on what size, we get the piglets. Um, so in April, we'd usually get them. We raise them from April all the way till the end of October, November. They're usually anywhere from 250 to 350 pounds, um, depending on the breed, um, depending on um, the pedigree, you might say, um, the bloodline. So the last the last two years, um, we've got these pigs from around the Sulphur area where Daniel Arms lives, Arms Man Homestead. He actually bought these um, these four, and we're kind of doing a trade. He bought them. I'm raising him one, and all he's got to do is uh, pay for the processing. And, uh, and it's kind of just a, it was a really good trade deal that we got going on. And um, we're raising two or we're raising two of them for four families at the church. We've done that for the last four years, I think. Um, that works out really well. It's just something that we were able to do for people. Um, all, all they'll have to pay for is a processing fee. So that's that's really not that big of a deal. Um, it's usually between 100 and 120 dollars. 
and uh, so that works out that works out well too um, to help them and we enjoy having multiple pigs because you need to have more than one pig a lot of times if, if um, it helps them compete with um, feeding and growth you're always gonna have one big one one really big one there's always gonna be the runt that's just kind of the nature of it um, but the whole point of this video really is is to get you guys motivated and on board to raising your own food um, not just pigs you start a garden um, start a garden that's something that we need to get better at as our garden I know a lot of people make big mistakes by making big gardens when they first start out and then they can't keep up with it. I've been to several of my friends houses and uh, over the last several weeks and I've seen all their gardens and I'm telling you guys right now their gardens always look, end up looking like mine at the uh, end of summertime. They're just over, they're overgrown. They're they're uh, they're weedy or overgrown with weeds. They're dying off. Um, it's one of the things when spring starts, everyone gets all motivated to start a huge garden, um, but it's a lot of work. And um, that's one thing I would um, uh, give you guys caution uh, caution about is the size of your garden. Start off if you've never done one. Start off small. Uh, maybe a few buckets so we've done that out here uh, maybe a few buckets or a raised bed or something and then see what exactly you want to grow and how much of that time how much time it takes you um, to do that because I've made the mistake of doing a really big garden one year and I cannot keep up with it whatsoever um, especially if you're by yourself doing things um, it's a lot more work than people think it's actually in my opinion 100% easier to raise pigs and chickens and and goats and stuff like that than it is to do to go, do a garden I'm telling you um, but you can you can do it don't let me discourage you on that part I'm just saying um, start small and work your way up um, so you don't get overwhelmed and quit that's what a lot of people do they'll get overwhelmed with things and just just give up on it so yeah, I hope this is motivating to someone out there I wanted to give an encouragement I want to be an encouragement today for somebody um, to be more self-reliant um, don't depend on the grocery store for everything and we still do a lot of grocery shopping obviously um, at stores we um, we live in a camper we have a little bitty refrigerator we don't have our deep freezer set up here I do have it set up at my brother's house um, we have a ha we have a half a steer in it so um, we'll get our beef and stuff over there whenever needed um, but that's not always the case for everybody I understand that um, uh, but like I was saying um, you just don't have the desire to raise your own animals but you want that fresh meat you want the, the good quality meat that's not in the grocery stores um, uh, there's all kinds of there's all kinds of uh, meat uh, companies out there that will actually ship them right to your house I'll probably be making a video on one here in the next month or so because um, we are the, this channel is sponsored by um, um, a good one and I'll, I'll discuss that in another video um, but and an another thing is too like my buddy Kevin from Hidden Heights Farm you guys might go check him out um, because as of a couple days ago he still had two whole pigs um, for sale uh, Kevin does like the business side of it and you can learn a lot on that um, if you want to turn your ho homestead into a business he actually has been raising the last several years um, pigs for families that don't want to raise them or can't raise them okay so Kev so so Kevin does like the business side of it um, as of the other day he had two of them um, still for sale so you can go to Hidden Heights Farm you can email him um, he still might have two of those if you're local and you're wanting to get a pig that you're you're not able to do it or you don't have the desire to but you want the fresh meat still go hit him up because uh, and then you can learn from his channel how he does the business side of it um, he provides a service for people um, like you that are watching this that aren't able to do it um, so that, that's that's another option too and uh, or you can just come to church with me and I'll raise you a pig <laughs> no I'm joking uh, uh, but so let's jump let's jump back to the beginning with the pigs so we'll get them in the in the spring and then we'll process have them process in the fall we'll start them on pig starter um, it's just a higher protein and um, you can we give scraps too from the time they're little until they're gone we give them scraps and that supplements a lot of the food but the, um, the pig starter is just a higher protein gets them really going and then about you know seven eight weeks in we'll put them on the pig grower um, for several months and then like the last three months two and a half three months we'll put them on the the pig finisher it's just um just steps lower in protein and then the very last month we'll do straight corn all the old timers say um put them the last 30 days on straight corn makes the meat sweeter i've done that for the last several years i don't know if it really does or not i don't i have never really done a taste comparison it definitely doesn't hurt it by any means the meat's always really really good um and uh, so yeah that's what we always do like i said um you have them in april all the way till november they're between 250 350 pounds depending on um the genetics um, the ones like i talked about earlier that we have here we got them from daniel arms over in sulfur and they're really really good genetics so these ones put a lot of weight on quick these are more like show qualities 
uh, show quality uh, breed um, than what we're used to. Um, the ones we get usually are just normal breeds, but these ones are like they're bred for show pigs, and these are kind of like the ones that they didn't quite make to show. Obviously, they're on my farm, and they're going to be uh, making the to freezer camp. Um, so that that does play into it on what breed and all that that you guys get. Uh, but anyways, um, so if you guys are on the fence, I'm telling you guys, you will not regret getting animals um, to raise for your family to be more self-reliant. Um, several years, a couple years ago, I started raising quail um, in my garage, and I got several people t reaching out to me, telling me by because of those videos of me showing you that you can raise quail indoor. Um, if you do it right, it can get kind of dirty and stuff. But you just got to clean it, clean it up. These people did it um, in the middle of the city. One did it in New York, in the on the balcony. On his balcony he was raising these quail um or his for his off his girlfriend him or him i don't remember um, but they raised quail on the balcony and were processing them in his kitchen watching my videos and i thought that was really really awesome and uh you know just something little like that just got him motivated to do it and uh, he was raising them in an apartment in new york city um and processing them on his kitchen counter <laughs> and uh, frying them up and eating them and he loved it um that's there, there's nothing wrong with that um now i don't they might frown upon that if you get caught doing it over there so kind of take uh, you kind of de decide that on your own, um, but it's, it's just a lifestyle that a lot of people strive, that a lot of people want this lifestyle, but just can never make it happen. Um, it's either, I don't know what that was, a big old grasshopper, I get, get distracted. Um, it's, it's either they live in the city, they just, they can't, they can't get away from their job or get a different job or they can move out in the suburbs or the country. Um, so they, they watch our videos and I kind of live through that and um, I do the same thing with people things I can't do I'll watch oh man that'd be awesome to do someday but I'm telling you guys you don't need a big space you don't need a lot of area to raise some sort of um, animals for for your uh, family or even a small garden book garden on the balcony you could do that too every little bit helps you'd be surprised when you go back down the lockdown um, from from the government but yet you got you got some quail on your back porch and uh, maybe them quail get you through a couple weeks. I mean, you don't know. We don't know. Maybe you got a couple uh, things with tomatoes uh, growing on your back porch or on your balcony, and that gets you through for a week or two. Um, just that little bit, can, I'm telling you, can be a lifesaver. Um, so just strive to be as most self-reliant as possible. Um, if that means start your own food storage um, with, with store-bought stuff, do it. Do it. I highly recommend it. Um, this is the one of the main reasons why I always wanted to have a homestead, um, not just for the, the fresh food, but was a way to provide for my family if anything ever did happen. Um, we'll always have some sort of um, food for us, not only with hunting, but with raising our own stuff. And you guys can do it too. So I hope this encouraged someone out there today. And uh, maybe, maybe you can uh, send me an email and uh, let me know. Um, let me know what you're going to do. Are you going to start a homestead? Are you going to start a little hobby farm? Are you going to start raising quail in your garage? Uh, I mean, just let me know. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in hearing your guys' story. So let me some comments and maybe send me some emails. Um, tell us how our channel has helped you guys in some sort of fashion, being more self-reliant. And uh, we appreciate you guys. We love, we love you guys. We thank you for coming along this journey with us. Um, even with these videos where I'm just chatting with you guys, um, I enjoy doing these videos where I'm just sitting down talking to you guys. It doesn't always have to be hard work, physical work, cutting trees down and building houses and, and stuff like that. I like doing that stuff too, but I like having to sit down and talk also. Um, but yeah, with that being said, um, we're going to have a busy, busy winter for you guys doing a lot of hard physical labor, not only at the house, but with splitting wood, milling our own siding, all that stuff. So stick around for all that. You guys will see me working hard. And uh, Brand oh, update on Brandy. Um, she went to the doctor. Um, she did. They did some blood work. Um, and we think it's allergies, uh, nothing serious. She's just down and out. So I, I tell her, I said, Brandy, you get bad allergies all the time. She said, I don't remember that. She, Brandy has allergies. It's, allergies are bad right now. The ragweed in Oklahoma, humidity's lower, it is bad out here. So and it's one of them things too, every little sniffle you think, uh, is it the, is it the, um, you know what? Uh, and uh, more times than none here around here, it's just, it's just the, it's just the allergies. Um, so thank goodness for that, right? Uh, love you guys. Catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.